Hello everyone, welcome to part two of um, the arpeggiator tutorial. I actually hadn't planned on this, but someone asked an interesting question in the comments, which was basically, uh, could we let the arpeggiator randomize itself, randomize the sequence and the melody uh, within a certain time period or every bar, every second bar. And then the idea was that you keep recording whatever it, it generates and um, yeah, eventually then pick the MIDI region apart and keep the sound bites or the MIDI bytes that you actually like. While this is a very interesting idea, I don't know if that on its own would merit a second tutorial. However, playing around with this idea, I figured out that it opens up quite a few new possibilities to interact with the arpeggiator. So here we are, part two, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's dive in. So first, instantiate the note grid device, which will serve as a host for the arpeggiator and the modulation devices we're going to use. Um, first, you want to reduce the number of voices to zero uh, or to one, because otherwise uh, sequencers will just not behave the way we expect in this case. And then instantiate an arpeggiator and make sure you instantiate it pre-effects because Post effects will be mono because we sent this device to mono. So if you hold down a chord, this will never be forwarded to the post effects. But in pre in the pre-effect section, it is everything is still there. So okay, what do we want? We want to randomize the sequence or randomize the melody every bar. Let's say bar. So first we need a trigger to tell some randomization device that it should randomize. So what do we have here? Um, I think a gate module would be the ideal candidate here. So every single time we pass the highlighted section, we can see that it uh, generates a signal. And now we need the device which is generating the random signal. And this is going to be a dice. A device, a device, a device, a dice device has an input which generates a random value whenever it receives a signal in the input. So let's go to an os pick an oscilloscope and let's just look at what, what it does. And true enough, we're generating a random signal whenever we pass the first step. And I also want this to work bipolar. Now, this will generate a, a signal between plus one and minus one. And um, I would like to control the range of the randomization. So I'll pick an attenuator. I just don't want this to be red. So pick another color here. And now we can control the amount of randomization from zero to one. Nice. Something else I would like to do is um, control the bias, which means um, around which point the randomization is happening. And if I move this knob, you can see, well, this is now the reference for the modulation and it will happen around this point. Right. OK. Reset it for now. And this is basically the setting we're going to use to modulate the single steps. So of course we need a modulation output. And before we start copying these for every single step, I want to add a macro device to control the amount of um, the attenuator and the bias. Uh, they are located in here, value and modulator out. I wish that Bitwig would include this modulator output in the value device because this is such a common application. I do this all the time. So well, like like in the, the LFO, for example, uh, where we have it built in, I think would be nice. Let's see, maybe maybe we'll get it eventually. Duplicate this and now apply the modulation to attenuation and 
Let's go for 100% with the bias. Okay, name these things. I think it's always useful to name things. Well, this is really the add then. And the second one is going to be the bias. So, and when we now copy these, um, the modulations will follow or will also be applied to every single copy. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can now control them all simultaneously, which is what we want. And now um, we need to apply them to the gate length, but we have a little problem. The gate length is already at 100%. So first we need to prepare uh, arpeggiator to um, accept these modulation signals the way we want. So triple click, sometimes a bit tricky, triple click on every single step and reduce the gate length to 50%. And um, to compensate for that, and because we still want to be able to use this device here, we have to increase the level here or the gate length here to 199%. So now it's perfectly compensated and it works as before. And now apply the modulation. And well, instead of clicking on every single device and adjust the value, we can also click in the background and then we can find all the modulations uh, that we have. And for some reason, gate number one is up here, but it doesn't really matter. And enter 0 0.5 for every single gate modulator. And if I hover over the arrow, you can see what happens. We are now able to modulate from the middle position to one or to 100% and from 50% down to zero. And now if if I open this attenuator, uh, we should see some randomization happening. And indeed we do. Okay, that's nice. Um, and that's it already for the gate length. We can, con uh, no, one thing is missing here. We need to switch to bipolar for this bias parameter. And now we can control in which area uh, the randomization is happening. So now let's do the same thing for the pitch. So highlight everything, hit command D or control D. And, and please check the modulations, you know, if they still behave in the same way, because sometimes Bitwig uh, duplicates the modulation, which then makes things behave a bit weird, but you would see it immediately that the modulation seems to be more extreme on certain um, knobs here, but it, it seems that it, it worked in this case. We have no errors. Uh, of course, now just uh, apply all these modulators to the pitch. Just click in the background to get all the modulators exposed and enter the value manually. It's going to be uh, 12 semitones. I think these were all steps. Yeah, looks good. Okay, and also, you know, we can see randomization happening. Well, I have now two triggers, so that's why it's happening twice. And now we can actually already have a listen. So let's instantiate something. Uh, I'll take the same acid sound I used last time and then just for some fun. Let's add some delay. So now we have to tame it a little bit, or in other words, quantize it by using a key filter and now force it into the scale we want. Let's pick an F minor again. 
And you can hear that on occasion it produces some very interesting result, but uh, let's say we're not recording, we're getting a nice melody and what will happen with a certainty of 100% that it generates a really nice melody, we're not recording and uh, then it will jump over the trigger and it will be lost forever. So maybe we can, you know, prevent that or at least build in some kind of emergency break. So let's do that. Uh, let's grab a button from the Logix modules and a selector device, hook the button up and now when we press the button it the, the circuit will be broken and the randomization won't happen anymore. But even more interesting than this, I think, is if we just use a trigger, which allows us um, to randomize this entire sequence and melody at will. So we can just uh, now, of course, now we have the circuit breaker active. We can just keep on pressing until we get something we like and then stick to that. And of course, use the bias and the, the attenuation to control, um, in this case, transposition and um, amount of transposition that we want. But it's also sometimes difficult to judge how it will sound in a context. So for that matter, I have um, drawn in uh, some kick and bass line stuff to yeah, give, give us a, a little reference. <laughs> can even transpose. Um, let's see how that sounds. because we still have all the options here, we can, for example, you know, increase the number of steps here to 16 and then on occasion add something to the transposition, maybe transpose up at the end or down or whatever fits. <laughs> Yeah, and the same is true, of course, for the gate length. Uh, we can introduce um, transposing over octaves. Mess with, with, with the division and yeah, whatever, whatever we, we like. So I hope you liked the tutorial. You uh, enjoy the new features that we have in our arpeggiator. And as always, like, subscribe, comment and see you next time.